Hey guys, so every time I have a mystical gem in my inventory, I get a million questions. What is the purple gem? What does it do? Where is it from? And all of that. So I'll try to explain it here. The mystical gem is a very rare drop from the Hyrule Troll. I think it's a 1% drop chance. And uh, I've never gotten one myself in well over 100 kills. The gem itself is a key for a big stone door in the bottom left in the Hyrule Origami Caves. And that's where I'm on my way in the video right here. And uh, it's very nice to be a warlock for this because you can just I'll fire the doors and phantomize through the mobs. And uh, a tip for the warlocks here, you can just put a Hydra in front of the red skeleton mage and uh, he'll firebomb himself, fireball himself. <laughs> uh, you might want to be careful with the other mobs down here because there are usually a lot of spear, axe and longsword skeletons. And uh, yeah, this example is from one of my 20 gem runs that I did for the leaderboards last night. And uh, I was going for rank 1 here, so you'll see me just ignore anything that isn't like sell them all to the merchants for a decent amount. Um, I also died once in a 1 versus 4 fight and also forgot my gem twice, <laughs> but I still ended up on rank 1 with 1072 gold, averaged over 20 runs. Uh, for the room itself, you want to check the marvelous chest that you need a lockpick for and the guaranteed purple item next to the treasure hoard. The treasure hoard is the main thing in here, of course. It's a pile of golden treasure that you can loot 10 times, and usually you can fill your entire inventory with blue and better treasure and get over a thousand gold in total. And that's another reason Warlock is nice. You don't have to keep any healing in your inventory. Although, I'd recommend bringing uh, Troll's Blood because if the zone is bad and you just in the zone, you're not gonna have to constantly heal and you'll save a lot of time. It can be kind of rough finding a portal at the end of the game when you have like very little time. And you don't want to rely on the on the guaranteed extract not being taken. For the looting part, I recommend dropping bigger items on the floor and trying to keep your inventory clean, because if there's an item that you don't have space for, it's going to get deleted. And uh, I'd drop blue and purple items out of the way so you can pick it up at the end. Uh, it might be a good idea to keep some single slot green items in a little pile by themselves, in case you have a few spots left over at the end of the looting session. And uh, you can also see that I'm holding a blue pickaxe here, which is for the 10% regular interaction speed. Uh, not really necessary, but makes looting a little bit faster. Pretty cool little tip as well, because it's not something you'd usually think about. When it comes to luck, I never noticed much of a difference, even on Bard with 250 luck, which I guess isn't possible anymore with the new update. But um, it's probably a good idea anyways to check a potion if you're doing a mystical gem run. Uh, luck potions can roll different amounts of luck, and during my leaderboard runs I always brought two in case the first one rolled low, which is why I have an extra one on me in the video. Uh, overall, I don't think running the mystical gem is worth it at all, because you'll usually end up paying more than a thousand gold for it, and on top of risking all your gear and any other consumables that you bring, there's not really any point to it unless you're doing the leaderboard or maybe going for a gold coin chest which uh, I never found myself, by the way, in around 20 gem runs total. Also, if you're curious about the next best treasure collecting method, you basically just want to break crates and loot high quality chests. I would say you ignore anything low quality and also the barrels. On the map here, I marked out some locations that I tried to go to, depending on my spawn. And there are some crates on the top level in the middle north room that are easy to get to as well. You can kill the troll, but the troll alone doesn't really give you that much, and you'll sometimes want to keep the non-treasure items that you get. Plus, there's the added risk of PvP, which you generally want to avoid, as it's usually a waste of time. If you think someone has treasure and they look like an easy kill, you could go for them though. Depending on how lucky you are with the crate breaking method, you should be making anywhere from 4 to 700 gold per run.